Welcome to worship once again, University Lutheran Church and Gethsemane Lutheran Church here in Gainesville, Florida. We gather once again during Advent, this time the third Sunday of Advent. Please take a moment to quieten your heart as we prepare for worship on this journey. So we begin with the lighting of the third advent candle in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The third advent candle urges us to be joyful, full of joy. It is an overflowing feeling, much like the glory of the Lord, which spilled out of heaven that ancient midnight to our Savior's birth. It spread from angel to shepherd, and finally to you and me. Be joyful. Luke, chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord.
Let us pray. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive to sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free, free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened by God's love, comforted by Christ's Spirit, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always and also with you. Share a sign of that peace with those close to you and send a text to someone that you can reach. the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Let us read Psalm 126 together. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like who dream? Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, 
will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. reading from John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one who you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of Our Lord. Godspell, a musical adaptation of the Gospel of Matthew, is one of my favorite musicals, which probably shouldn't be too surprising coming from a sem seminarian. I practically wore out the cassette of the original cast recording. It was my anthem, and I actually have some trouble hearing parts of the Gospel of Matthew being read aloud because I want to sing them. One of my favorite songs is the first song, Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord, sung by the actor portraying John the Baptist. When I would listen to it or sing it, I would instantly feel both calm and exuberant I still feel this way when I hear and sing the song. My reaction to the song has to do with the anticipation that the song brings. The listener knows something good is about to happen. It's also a wonderful command to bring about the kingdom of God where peace and justice will reign and human ills and worries are no more. In God's kingdom, Righteousness, joy, peace, and happiness are the foundations. It's also pretty radical. The idea of God's kingdom coming and God dwelling with us in human form. If you have seen the film adaptation of the musical, John and his disciples dress and act in a way that depicts this some revolutionary and somewhat bizarre idea well. And they're not so far off from what I think John and Jesus' disciples may have seemed like to the Pharisees and the Jewish leaders. Two troublemaking hippies and their groupies. Yet it was what today would be described as good trouble. Trouble that brings about justice, not pain. Based on the gospel descriptions, John must have been a wild sight perhaps even spoken of as a weirdo, a man dressed in camel's hair who only eats locusts and honey emerging from the wilderness and telling others to repent. I'm guessing a few more than the Pharisees were asking, who is this guy? He definitely wasn't your average bear, 
But we knew that from the beginning, when he leapt in Elizabeth's womb in the presence of the Messiah, when Mary visited Elizabeth. Though the depiction of John's John in today's gospel lesson is much different than his depictions in the three other gospels, particularly Matthew. The way John is described in Matthew, Mark, and Luke is that of a fiery prophet calling us to repent now for the kingdom is near, which explains the questions from the priests and the Levites. You know, if the shoe fits. But John surprisingly says the shoe doesn't fit. He instead confesses that he is the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, and his baptisms are a prequel to the one whom he is not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. He is not even worthy to be Christ's slave, which was the lowest of the social hierarchy. This humbling of himself emphasizes the greatness of who follows. John knows who is the Messiah or the light, and he knows his role in testifying to the light and proclaiming that the light is coming. John finally reveals himself as the herald, the voice crying out in the wilderness, making straight the way of the Lord. John is paving the way for Christ, which he has done in everything, his birth, his ministry, and even his death. For all of these, he preceded Jesus because his purpose is to bring the light and grace of Christ into the world. Looking at last week's reading from Isaiah, from which John declares himself to be, and preparing the pathway for the Lamb of God, John is declaring the time of Jubilee, the grace that Jesus brings. <clears throat> In the verses leading to John's self-description, it is written, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. John is testifying and bringing us grace and the light that shall not be overcome. In these verses, the prophet evokes the wonderful feeling of forgiveness that comes when reconciliation happens and sins are forgiven. Jesus is that reconciliation between God and humans. He is the light of God coming to dwell with us in human form, to be with us and experience all that is to be human, love, anger, joy, tears. He met us beyond halfway. He met us all the way. John is proclaiming this radical idea and the good news it brings. Like John, we too can bring the healing light of Christ into this world because we are still living in a broken world. And this brokenness that has only gotten worse as the pandemic has raged on. Loneliness, which Mother Teresa called the greatest disease of the West, has worsened as we must isolate ourselves to protect ourselves and others. Even the consoling smile is hidden behind a mask. Isolation and death are ever present and on our minds. It is no wonder that thoughts of suicide have increased and there are months long waiting lists to speak with a therapist. We are living in darkness, yet in this darkness, can we can be the light. God cares if you are hurting and God cares if a friend or stranger is hurting as well. The verses that follow John's confession from Isaiah tell us that God loves us and wants more from, for us. It is written, every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. The psalmist echoes it too in today's psalm. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. God, through Jesus, whom John heralded, made grace human so we may be like the psalmist and proclaim Jesus and the greatness of the Lord. 
Through Christ, we have become the light of the world. John did not shy away from his purpose and from speaking God's truth. He spoke it loudly and boldly. We should do the same, especially during this time of darkness, seasonally and nationally. Our actions or words of Christ's love may be the light to someone living in darkness. I know for Lutherans, evangelizing or even mentioning we attend church is difficult. Although I have become better, I still have far to go. Yet it doesn't take much to show Christ's light. It doesn't have to be with a tele-evangelist energy and abandoned, abandon, but a kind word, smiles, smiling eyes, a prayer, or telling someone they are loved and that God loves them. You're acknowledging their loneliness, but showing love. These are all ways to be Christ's light in a world that is in desperate need of love and healing. As an acolyte in my church growing up, when we snuffed out the second candle on the altar at the end of the service, we didn't completely snuff out the candles. We lit the candle lighter and carried the flame from Christ's light out into the world. I still do this as a worship assistant. We are Christ's light. And in this season of Advent, be like John. Proclaim the good news and be that light because Sunday isn't the only time you can light Christ's candle. has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in that trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Let us pray. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witnesses of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your words in their hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
God of all people and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquakes, hurricanes, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to confront the people who turn to us in times of need. We pray, especially for those we name out loud or silently in our hearts. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testify to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. We pray together as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. A few parish announcements before we close today. Firstly, we wish those who have birthdays this week a very happy birthday. Let's remember them in prayer and pray for each other as we become aware of the needs amongst us. 
Please note the special congregation meetings by Zoom. Today, UELC members, remember that your annual meeting or special meeting is at 11 a.m. I remind you once again that all gatherings in person at UELC and GLC will remain suspended according to the advice of our COVID advisory group based on the guidelines of the CDC. Let's receive the blessing of the Lord. The creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.